John 20, verse number 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, look at this, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. The holes were still there. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Thank God he did not send them by, him, by themselves. But he gave them something before he sent them. And when he said this, look at this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Let's go to Acts Acts chapter number 2. Now, I'm going to read purposely from the Amplified Version just to give our, um, our text some context. I will be reading this, as I stated, from the Amplified Version by way of my Apple device. At come through, who said that? The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Verse 12. And all were beside themselves with amazement and were puzzled and bewildered, saying one to another, what can this mean? And others made a joke of it and derisively said, they are simply drunk and full of sweet, intoxicating wine. <laughs> But Peter, someone say, but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You Jews and all you residents of Jerusalem. Now look at this. In John, they were there because they were scared of the Jews. But in Acts, here he is speaking to who he was once scared of. You Jews and all you residents of Jerusalem. Let this be explained. Someone say explained. Let this be explained to you so that you will know and understand. Listen closely to what I have to say, verse 15. For these men are not drunk as you imagine, for it is only about 9 a.m. in the day. <laughs> but instead, this is the beginning of what was spoken through the prophet Joel. Let me read that last verse again, verse 16. But instead, this is the beginning of what was spoken to the prophet Joel. Repeat after me. Give us the bread that we may be fed in Jesus' name. And you may take your seat. I don't have no notes, so we're just going to go with God today. Is that okay? I want to preach from this subject, this subject. This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. I want to add a subtopic to this. I want to add a subtopic to this. I want you to look at everyone around you and just tell them it starts with me. You know, lay hands on yourself and say that it starts with me. It starts with me. Let's, let's start this this way. Lord, help us today. Whenever God is going to make a major move within the earth, he's going to send it so that the world may know him. He sends a move of God so that the world can be revealed Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ can be, can be revealed to the world. But before it gets to the world, it first has to hit a nation. Before it hits a nation, it first has to hit a state. Before it hits a state, it has to hit a region. Before it hits a region, it has to hit a city. 
before it hits the city, it has to hit a county. But before it hits that, it has to hit a person. If God is going to manifest anything to the world, it first has to start with someone. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Therefore, he would be illegal if he were to come down and do it himself. But he wants to show how God he is by taking someone who might have a weakness, might not have it all together, might have proclivities, might not have every I dotted and every T cross, but he wants to take an ordinary person and do extraordinary things through them. I mean, look at what Jesus did. He took 12 little boys, late teens, early 20s, took late, some young men, took them in their fishing, took them in their trades, took them in what they were doing every day, pulled them out of the normalcy of life and said, I want to use you to do something amazing. I'm coming from John and Acts, but let me talk about Acts for, uh, for a quick second. The book of Acts, the full name of Acts is the Acts of the Apostles. But really, I don't think that is a proper name because you would think if it's the Acts of the Apostles that it was the Apostles that did it. No. The Acts of the Apostles should, the actual name should be the Acts of the Holy Ghost through the Apostles. Because let me get a witness. You can't do nothing except God be in you to do it. Let me say that one more time. You, as a matter of fact, you are a ship. Yes, you are. You are a ship. But without God, you have no sail. What good is it to have the potential to do something, but don't have the power to drive me to do it? Mm. You are a ship having potential, having, having capacity. But without the Holy Ghost through you to do it, you have no sail. You have nothing to push you into what God is calling you to do. So it's not not you that's doing anything. It's not you that deserves any credit. It's not you that deserves any accolade. It's not you that deserves any recognition. But everything I do and anything that I succeed at and anything that I achieve, I do it only because God allowed it. To God be the, let me steal Terry Wooden's words, God be praised. Ain't no praise that needs to go to me. I thought I would have a little bit more of y'all just did. Let me try that again. Don't no praise go to me. Don't no credit go to me. Don't no glory come to me. But anything that I do, watch this, not just not in church, any new car that I get, any new house I get, any degree that I get, the only reason I had to do it is because God allowed me to, the only reason my marriage is still holding together, it ain't because we went through a therapist, it's because I knew the great counselor. It's to, to God. To God. I need you to tell your neighbor, God did this. He did this. I know you look good. I know you fine as wine. But the only reason you look as good as you do is because God gave you the features to do it. It wasn't your mom and your daddy. It was God that did it. It was God. It was God to, through me who, who is the hope of glory. God himself decided to look on me and everything that watch me. Because if, if I were God, I wouldn't choose me. If I were God, I thought I would have had another person. Chat, if I was God, I would look at me and say, oh, no, not that. But let me get somebody a little bit more perfect. But thank God he looked on an ordinary, weak individual and put his strength on something that it, to God. Be, it's the acts of the Holy Ghost through the apostles where he took them and put his hand on them and caused them to do mighty acts, mighty works. So here it is. Our scene is a little strange now. Our scene is a little strange because you have these disciples who have walked with Jesus for three and a half years. Jesus has taught them, trained them, shown them many things. But now the person that has trained them, walked with them, has died. 
I want y'all to put, don't act as if you know the whole story. Put yourself in the disciples' shoes. Who I've been gone and following has died, has left me. He said he would never die. He said he would come back. But it seems that they killed you a little bit too good for you to come back. They have nailed you in your hands. They pissed you in your side. All your blood, all the water in your body has rushed out. They pissed you in your feet. Ain't no possible way that you're going to come back. There's no way. So the disciples are here. Their belief is shattered. Their hope is shattered. Their faith is shattered because the reference to my belief is a dead man. I know y'all blame, and even, you know, we look at Thomas and blame him, you know. I won't believe you except I see him for myself. And we've taught him doubting Thomas. We got the disciples who are gathered in fear. You have the disciples, some who rejected him, some who are scared that the people are going to come after them because they follow Jesus. I mean, they are here in a very tough spot. They're in a very tough spot now because they don't know where else to go because it seems like Jesus Jesus is not coming back. Here it is, though, three days after he's been buried. Here comes a rolling away of a stone in front of a tomb. And Jesus is now resurrected. He's alive now. And the first person who sees him is Mary Magdalene. Watch this. Women, if y'all don't help me, you might be in the wrong church this morning. Look at Mary Magdalene. Walks up to an empty grave. Turns around, sees a man who she thinks is a gardener. And says, please tell me where the man that was here, where is he now? I don't see him. She didn't even know. She was looking at what she was looking for. Hey, she was looking at who she was looking for. She's looking at Jesus. And all it took for Jesus to reveal himself was to call her name. Uh -uh. Lord, you know what? Prophesy to a neighbor and say, neighbor, what you're looking for is getting ready to call your name. You've been praying about what you're in the face of. Oh, but I'm telling you what you've been looking at is getting ready to come to you. Here it is now, but here's where y'all should praise God, women. Watch this. Mary sees Jesus. She runs to the disciples and says, Jesus is alive. He has risen. Now watch me. The gospel message is the death burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Any If a preacher don't preach that, they ain't no preacher. But she now declares, she goes out and declares that God has risen. Now, if that be the gospel that we preach, then that tells me the first person to preach a message, it won the man. Let me, let me get on the church folk who don't think women can't be called to preach. Let me, surely if a woman can carry him, then surely a woman can, surely a woman can preach about him. And sure enough, it, 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 watch me, it took a woman to make men believe. Now let me help somebody. Let me talk to every narcissistic pastor who don't think women can preach and open their mouth and declare the word of the Lord. Let me tell you something, pastor. I hope they got that. I hope everybody, every pastor who don't think women can preach. Let me look dead at the camera. Which one? Watch me. It was a woman that went from the grave and preached the first message that Jesus is alive. So if any man tried to liberate a woman for preaching the gospel, the gospel is the gospel because a woman preached it first. Do me a favor, women. I need you to lift your hands and give God praise because he called you too. He called you. Y'all sit down, sit down. Hallelujah. It was a woman. It was a woman. A woman. A woman. A woe man. It was a woe man who preached the first gospel to say that Jesus is alive and so but watch me watch me things ain't changed y'all because the woman went to the men and the men didn't believe her yeah the, the men did not believe her so what they did they went to an upper room 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 and they gathered themselves they gathered themselves because they were fearful that because they were followers of Jesus that the Jews were going to kill them too 
it makes sense to me. I mean, if somebody were coming to kill me, you ain't going to find me or at my house. I'm going to be somewhere in Cancun where you can't find me. Come on, church. I love my life. I'm telling you, I do. I'm going to run and I'm going to lock myself up. Yes, I am. But, but they, this is where they are. They are locked in a room so that the Jews could not find them. And yes, I know God has not given us the spirit of fear. And I know that fear is the enemy of faith. I know that's what we deep folks say. But what I love about Jesus is these disciples are fearful, but Jesus came to them in their fear. I know he don't give fear, but he'll step up in fear. And he'll show fear who to really be scared of. He walks into, thank you, Mama Pam. He walks, they are in a locked room in fear. They have gathered in fear. And here it is, Jesus steps into their fear and walks through a closed door. Uh, yes, he walks through a closed door. Now, let me back up a little bit because I see something that's very interesting, interesting, Minister David. Because remember, the tombstone was rolled away, but he walks through a shut door. The tomb was rolled away, and y'all think the tomb was rolled away so he can get out. No, this shows us that Jesus had the ability to push past physical barriers. Any barrier that they put up, Jesus was able to walk through. So watch me. The tombstone was rolled away, not for Jesus to come out, but to give you evidence that he ain't there. Hey, whoa, the tombstone didn't get rolled away because of Jesus. He could have came out of there without it. But yet they, the tombstone was rolled away to give everybody evidence that if you look in there, you won't find nobody in there. But they're in, they're in, they're in. Y'all pushing me. Stop pushing me so fast. Here it is. They are in this locked room. Jesus steps up to them in a closed door. I know they preach to you and tell you that when Jesus was resurrected, he came back with a glorified body. Oh, no, 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 no. He had the same nails. He still had the piercing in his side. He still had the holes in his feet. Watch me. Because if he came without the nails, it would not be him. So their faith still would not be moved because the last time I saw you, you had, no, you had holes there. If you didn't have holes here now, I wouldn't think you were Jesus. You're some ghost. You're some phantom. You're some spirit. You're not Jesus, but yet his scars proved that he was who he was. Now let me get, let me bless you real quick. No, no, no. You want God to remove your scars and remove what you've been through and you want God to remove the pain of your past and you want God to remove the memory of what you went through. But what if I told you the reason why God made you keep the memories and the scars is to come out to say, I had it, but I came with the victory. Hallelujah. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know you see me looking good now, but please know I got some scars on my life. I've been to hell and back, but the reason why I can praise God today is because even though I got the holes here, it proves to you that I came out all right. Oh, that I still got the victory. You know what? Help me, help me real quick. If you still got some scars on you that God ain't moved, do me a favor. Lift your hands in here. Throw your head back. Open your mouth and praise God because you got scars, but you got victory. I got pain, but I still got a purpose for it. He, he walks in. Hallelujah. Woo! He walks, he walks in with the scar still there. He walks in with the holes in his hand still there. With the gaping hole in his side still there. With the nail prints in his feet still there. And his scars made the disciples excited. I love that. Makes the disciples excited. Because this is what we've waited on. He speaks to them, peace be unto you. And when he says this, watch this. He looks at them and says, now what I'm going to do. 
the same thing that I did, I'm going to man command you to do the same thing. Greater works shall you do in my name. I'm going to send you out as I, as the Father sent me, I'm going to send you. Y'all follow me? Follow me. We're getting ready to take a turn. Mm. Yeah, we're getting ready to take a turn now. We're getting ready to take a turn. He says, I, the Father has sent me. I'm getting ready to send you, but I cannot send you how you are. Because even though you see me, there's still people that going to try to kill you. Because surely if they persecuted Jesus, they're going to persecute you too. Let me, you know what, let me put a pause here real quick. If you are a follower of Jesus, you don't have the luxury of living an easy life. Stop praying for that. You don't have the luxury of living an easy life. Let, let me get a witness. Let me get a witness. How many of you can say that this, this salvation walk has not been a walk in the park? It has not been a glorious thing, but all I know is if the Father has sent me, he has not sent me by myself. Watch me, yea, though I walk. Hey, through the valley of the shadow of death, I feel no evil. Why? Because I'm not there by myself. The Lord is with me. He says, I'm going to send you with the extra power. So he breathes on them. Breathe. We walk. He breathes on them. Now, this breathe is the same thing that you find in Genesis. When he breathed into them the breath of life, what he did, he said, let me go back to the days of your creation. Let me put back into you what sin took out of you. I'm going to put my spirit in you. He breathes on them and tells them, receive the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. Watch me. Watch me. They receive not the promise of the Holy Ghost. They receive the experience of the Holy Ghost. The full promise did not come until Acts chapter 2. We're getting ready to go there. But he gives the disciples a precursor of Pentecost. Ooh, I love alliteration. He gives them a precursor of Pentecost. He gives them just a little teaser of what you will experience in Acts chapter 2. Now watch me. He had to give them this encounter for a reason. Tell them, tell your neighbor it was a reason. It was a reason. Gave them this encounter for a reason. Now we're going to take a journey. Now we go over to Acts chapter 2. The Holy Ghost, the promise has come now. You have people who are gathered in faith to receive the promise. You have people who have gathered. There are 120 at this moment. 120. Now, mind you, it started out with 500. But the, pro the, 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 the stipulation to receive the promise was you got to get here. I'm not going to tell you where you're going to get it, but you got to wait. This is where we get terrier service from. They had a terrier service. Yes, they did. They had to sit there, tarry there, wait there until the Holy Ghost has come. But watch me. They started with 500, but ended up with 120. They started with 500 into ended with 120. That just tells me, watch this, that there were some people who did not want it bad enough to wait for it. There were some people who left before they could get it. There's 120 there now, but they were there one place or one accord. All of a sudden, there comes a sound that is like a mighty rushy wind and filled the whole house. We know all of that. They started acting real unseemly, and there's some things that started going on. Now, this brings me to Acts chapter number 2, because they are here, and there are some people on the outside listening like, what in the ham and cheese is going on? on up there. You got folks who are speaking in languages that don't make sense now. Let me do, can, can I do just a little bit more teaching? Tell me I can. Thank you. Just give me this little moment and I'm going to make Pentecostal folk mad. Okay. L let me just, let me park here for a second. Let me park here. Now in our text, they spoke with other tongues, in other tongues, with other tongues. Now there's a difference between unknown and other. 
Paul came and talked about unknown tongues. That's when we in church, we quicken and we, you know, all that. That's unknown. That's unknown tongues. I don't have time to really break down the different purposes of unknown tongues right now. But he, they're, they're not speaking in unknown tongues here. They're speaking in other tongues. Other tongues. Someone say other tongues. Other tongues and unknown tongues are not the same. This is why back in the day, they, was, they, they had some good heart for it, but it was totally unbiblical. They had you waiting to receive the Holy Ghost and speaking in unknown tongues. That's not what happened in Acts chapter 2. But watch what happened. There were some visitors, 9,000 plus, Keisha. There's some visitors that are in Jerusalem who speak another language. When the Holy Ghost came on them in Acts 2, they start speaking the language of the strangers so it caused them to be able to communicate in a language they did not know so that everybody else could understand it which means the Holy Ghost don't come to make you speak in unknown tongues he teach you how to speak to other people that you don't know now let me talk to you and tell you this if you claim to have the Holy Ghost but don't know how to talk to people I debate that you don't have the Holy Ghost for real because the whole purpose of the Holy Ghost coming well, so that people who don't talk like you, you can talk to them. I'm trying now. I'm trying. I need you to do me a favor. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, if you really got the Holy Ghost, you'll know how to talk, not just the church folk. You can talk to the sinner. You can talk to the homosexual. You can talk to the addict. You can talk to the divorcee. You can talk to people that you don't like. You can talk to people that don't believe like you. You can talk to the atheist. You can talk to the Buddhist. If the Holy Ghost is in you, you can talk to anybody. This is why I stopped trying to talk to folks in unknown tongues and talk in other tongues. Learn how to talk in a language other than your... Let me get out of that. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that on Pentecost Sunday. I'll deal with it. We'll come back. But here it is. They're talking in an unseemly way. And people on the outside, some are like, wait a minute. This, they're speaking our language. I'm trying, Keisha. Good to see you, Lily. I love you so much. Here it is. I, I, I hear a language that I understand. But I know they don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know my language like that. How in the world is this? You got one half saying that, but you got another half that is like, wait a minute. These folk drunk. They call themselves followers of Jesus. These folks are drunk. They acting unseemly. They intoxicated. They done had a good shot of Henny. They got some cognac, some Grey Goose, some, some Bacardi, huh? They got some stuff up there that they, they ain't supposed to be drinking. And they are drunk now. But watch what happens. Peter now comes up because there are some people in doubt. They have some questions. But watch me. Look what verse 14 of chapter 2 of Acts says. It says, but Peter... Hallelujah. Standing up in the, with the eleven, he lifted up his voice and said unto them, Pause. Let's stop here. Because some translations will say he said unto them. I'm trying, Nikki. Some translations says he said unto them. I don't really like that, Mama Pam. I don't really like that because what that really means is that he answered them. If he answered them, that means everybody else had questions that needed to be answered. Now watch this. Peter always had a personality of standing up when the time needed. Now, you think you a thug. No, bro. Peter was a real one. I mean, will cut you and cuss you in the same sentence and then say bless you in Jesus' name afterwards. I mean, G uh, Peter was a lot like some of y'all. I thank God for y'all because I can't be him. Peter was a lot like some of y'all. He was a nuck if you buck type person, you know. And you know, he, he was the one that's going to stand up if something needs to be said. But what I love about this, when the Holy Ghost came on him, the Holy Ghost didn't take that nuck if you buck. But he used the nuck if you buck for his purpose. That's Let me tell you something. You always know what God has anointed you to do by looking at what the devil tried to pervert. Oh, Lord have mercy. 
You always can see what the what God has called you to do by what the devil keep messing with. Watch me. You'll know God wants you to be a millionaire because it'll be hard for you to get your money up. The devil will always be messing with it. That's why I believe prostitutes are actually really called to be evangelists because they got the anointing to draw in. Catch that tomorrow. They have the anointing to draw, to draw, to draw people in. So whatever the devil tries to do is really what God wants to use. Let me prophesy to you real quick. Whatever the devil has had his hands on in your life, whatever the devil has tried to mess with, that's the very same thing that God is getting ready to touch. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to do me a favor. Can you look at your neighbor for the second to the last time and tell your neighbor, say neighbor. I don't know what the devil's been messing with in your life. But whatever it is, please be encouraged because God is getting ready to use it. The devil wouldn't mess with something that God ain't got an intent to use. But whatever the devil's been messing with, God is getting ready to slap the devil's hand off and put his hands on. Can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Lift your hands real quick. Throw your head back, church. Open your mouth, fam, and watch me. I want you to praise God because what the devil meant for evil, God is getting ready to turn it around. But you know what? Real quick, thank you, Sister Terry. Real quick, jump up, turn around one time and sit back down and say, God is going to turn it. He's going to turn it. He's going to turn it. Let me hear but what I love about this, what I love, what I love, what I love now, I'm almost done. Give me, give me just about 15 more minutes and I'm done. No, 10, 7. I'm almost done. Watch me. So Peter stands up and now starts to declare that these men are not drunk. As you suppose, if we were going to get drunk, we'll start at 10 o'clock at night. But it's 9 o'clock in the morning. We, we ain't drunk, but this is that that the prophet Joel pre preached about. Now, the reason why I had to pull these two together, remember, tell somebody this is only the beginning. No, 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 no. Tell them, scream at them, say, this is only the beginning. But look back at them and say, but it starts with me. It starts with me. Because watch this. Look at this. You have in John chapter 20, the disciples gathered in fear. But the 120 gathered in faith. Watch me, watch me. The disciples gathered in fear, Brother Holloway, Deacon Holloway, in John chapter 20. But in Acts 2, they all gathered in faith. One more time. In John 20, they gathered in fear. In Acts 2, they gathered in faith. But both got the Holy Ghost. One came in fear, the other came in faith, and they both got the Holy Ghost. What am I telling you? I don't care what condition you come in. I don't, I don't care if you came in fear, in sin, in shame, or you came sanctified speaking in tongues. I don't care. All your only responsibility is to get to the room. And if you can get to the room, God can deal with what you came with. This is why I don't know why some folks ain't came back to the church because they scared yet. I don't know why some people still ain't came to, to the house because watch me. Your only responsibility is just to get to the upper room. And if you can get to the room, no matter if you came in fear and no matter if you came in faith, you're going to get what you came for. Can you please grab your neighbor by the hand for me? We're getting ready to go home. Grab your neighbor by the hand for me. And I want you to shake the hand like you're trying to shake it off. And say, neighbor, I don't know what condition you came in this morning. But tell them I got a prophetic word for you. That whatever you came with, you still going to get what you came for. I don't know what you stand in need of. But in whatever condition you came in, because you came and made it to the room, God's going to give you exactly what you came for. I don't know what you came with. You probably came with sickness or you came with salvation. I don't know if you came in fear or you came with faith. I don't even know if you came with something that you can't get rid of 
or you came with something and you feel like everything is all right. But no matter what condition you came in, God don't give you exactly what you need. Do me a favor, look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I prophesy to you now that whatever condition you came in, God is getting ready to change it all. He's going to give you exactly what you need. Yes, he's going to give you what you need. But remember, 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 there were, the Holy Ghost made his first appearance in John chapter 20. The fullness of the promise came in Acts chapter 2. But you have the disciples here. I'm almost there. You know what? Let's go to another key just to make sure you're comfortable. Do me a favor. I want you to look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, the Holy Ghost came fully in Acts chapter 2. But help me preach, but tell me, say, neighbor, his encounter, the experience, the teaser came in John 20. Now, why did God have to do that? Because in Acts chapter 2, God knew that there were going to be some people who did not understand. So in John chapter 20, he said, let me give you an experience. Let me give you an experience. Let me give you a teaser. Because in a few more days, I'm getting ready to feel everybody around you. But I need somebody to explain what's going on. I need somebody to be able to tell everybody that these folks ain't drunk. They ain't lost their mind. But I need somebody to explain to them exactly what's going on. Do me a favor. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor. Everybody around me is getting ready to see God. But tell them, say, neighbor, but it starts with me. I'm going to be the proof of what God is doing in everybody else. I'm going to be the explanation to what God is doing in everybody else. But what I love about this, when Peter stands up to preach, he says, I want to let you know that if you confuse now, if you in doubt now, you might as well go ahead and get with the program. Because this is that that the prophet Joel prophesied about. But remember with the way that the Bible is written, what he actually said is this. This is not just what prophet Joel preached about, but this is only the beginning of what God is doing for you. Do me a favor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. I know God is doing some things in your life, but let me encourage you that if folks confused about it now, they might as well get with the program because this is only the beginning. If they jealous of you now, they might as well get with the program because this is only the beginning. I know I got a little money in my bank account, but this is only the beginning. And despise not. I'm done with this. Despise not small beginnings. I know it's 120 now, but in just a few minutes, 3,000 are getting ready to come in. Do me a favor, grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is only the beginning of what God is doing in you. But say, neighbor, before it hits my family, before it hits my friends, before it hits my co-workers, before it hits my husband, before it hits my wife, it's going to start with me. 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 Do me a favor. Don't look at your neighbor. Lay hands on yourself and say, self. It's getting ready to start with me. And when it hits me, it's going to hit the family. When it hits the family, it's going to hit the street. When it hits the street, it's going to hit the city. When it hits the city, it's going to hit the state. When it hits the state, it's going to hit the nation. But when it hits the nation, it's going to hit the world. Do me a favor. Let me prophesy to you that revival is getting ready to hit America. Revival is getting ready to hit the nation. But I got a word 
God says, who can I start it with? Who can I start it with? I feel like the prophet. If you send me, I will go. I feel old soon. If you send me, I'll go. Who can start with me? And with his stars, I ain't stopping. Come what may, come what witch, come what warlock. I got a word that because I have the Holy Ghost, I need 20 of y'all to jump with me. Because I have the power that I need, I got a word that no. That no weapon from the kitchen shall, shall be able to prosper. Do me a favor. For the last time, I promise, grab your neighbor. Grab your neighbor. I say, grab your neighbor. Grab their hand and shake their hand. Let us upon the road picture. And turn neighbor. God's getting ready to start a movement in you and it's only the beginning it's only the beginning it's only the beginning and when it starts in me COVID ain't the only thing contagious COVID ain't the only thing contagious because when you connect with me what's on me gonna work on you what's on me Gonna get on you. Ain't no vaccine for this. What's on me? Gonna get on you. And God, get it ready to pull you to the world. Pull you on your job. Pull you in your family. Pull you to your co workers. And what's on you? Gonna get on them. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor. As a matter of fact, no. Do me a favor. Just rub on your neighbor. Say, neighbor, what's on me? Gonna get on you. What's on me? Power. Anointing. Glory. Gonna get on you. Gonna get on you. Gonna get on you. Gonna get on you. You know what? Go ahead, Uncle Bill. Go for it. Do me a favor. Get your phone, get your phone, get your phone. Go through your contacts, look at your family, touch that contact and say that contact, what's on me, don't get on you. What's on me, don't get on you. And what's on me, don't get on you. It's only the beginning, it's only of the beginning. Can't stop us now. We on the move. Do me a favor. Move out your seat. Go to seven people and tell them it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. It's a
no, de no depression, no poverty can stop what God doing in you. Do me a favor. Lift your hands. Hold your head back. Open your mouth and praise him. That is only the beginning. 